8.9%, Q2 uh, headline uh, GDP. Do you feel that that is the peak? Is that as good as we get? Or do you feel that there are some recessionary signals starting to creep into the Malaysian economy? Yeah. Well, thank you, Sri. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, it's our pleasure. I'm still uh, very optimistic that we will uh, get to the forecast uh, GDP uh, number of between 5.3 and 6.3 percent. And as you said earlier, uh, probably at the top end of that 6.3 percent. Uh, first half of the year, we grew by 6.9 percent. Uh, and your question is whether we will be uh, experiencing a slowdown in the third quarter. Um, I think by looking at the chart, you can see that the third quarter last year was actually a negative growth, right? So from that base, uh, we should continue to see a strong growth uh, just on the base effect uh, for the third quarter. So the third quarter, in my view, uh, given the, the momentum that we've seen, uh, should be uh, as strong or even or if not stronger than quarter three. Uh, but the challenge will be quarter four, right? Quarter four this year, as you know, there are challenges in the world economy, uh, what we're seeing, what's happening uh, in the global economy. Uh, even IMF and World Bank have uh, revised the forecast of the global growth, uh, the Ukraine and Russian conflict. And of course, China, which is the largest uh, trade partner for Malaysia, uh, is also having a very uh, conservative COVID policy. And this has also uh, disrupted the supply chain and the trade uh, between Malaysia and China. If that continues, obviously, that will... Uh, uh, dampen some of the uh, growth expectation in the fourth quarter of this year for Malaysia. Minister, this is JP Ong. Uh, first off, a very impressive uh, second quarter report card, if I may call it that. And a lot of this, it's, uh, it's a lot of this actually driven surprisingly by personal consumption. It seems the Malaysian consumer is coming back with a vengeance. You might call it revenge spending, or you just might call it the reopening momentum of Malaysia being quite strong. But I do wonder, and I'd like to ask you, what sort of part did the subsidies that, Mal that the Malaysian government has rolled out, what sort of part did this play in actually bolstering consumer sentiment that grew by, if I'm not mistaken, more than 18% on a year-on-year -year basis? Um, what part did it play in supporting the Malaysian consumer and going out there to spend? Yeah. Uh, thank you, JC. The first point that you raised just now is the opening up of the economy. Uh, we opened our international borders on the 1st of April, and that obviously has helped uh, the economy. Um, the, the domestic consumption has gone uh, uh, strong, much stronger than we expected, though. Uh, retail spending, for example, retail and wholesale spending, just for the month of June, uh, year on year, is already up 44%. Uh, percent. Uh, and uh, the various fiscal stimulus packages that we announced two years ago and we continue uh, to ensure that happens uh, has also helped uh, consumer spending. And we've seen even car sales gone up uh, 30%. Yeah, you know, to an extent, extent got to do with pent-up demand, uh, but it also has to do with the policy measures that the government has undertaken. And if you see uh, the unemployment numbers are also uh, low, uh, it's back to our natural rate of unemployment. Uh, it's now at 3.8% uh, from the peak of 5.3%. Uh, on the subsidies, yes, uh, subsidies uh, has been uh, a record high uh, in the history of Malaysia. Uh, we are expecting subsidy to reach close to 80 billion ringgit this year. Uh, especially given the high uh, oil prices, uh, and we are subsidizing it uh, close to 30 billion uh, ringgit uh, this year. But however, as a, as a result, uh, as you know, uh, this, um, that inflation in Malaysia uh, is now in the, in the first six months around 2.5%, uh, much lower uh, than uh, our uh, other neighbors.